Hello guys, so I want to talk about several things that have been on my mind for a while. And first of all, I saw a video today of Diziani and she was talking about different kinds of things that make Nigeria bad. She got up and she was talking about Yahoo Boys and several other things about how you can be a better human being. Coming from someone who is the scum of the earth, literally, she's the worst kind of human beings there is. And it is shocking because it's not actually shocking to be honest. This follows a general trend that we've been seeing over these days. And I would only partly blame Diziani for being a terrible human being. The only reason why she can have the confidence and have the, the balls basically to come out and say what she said is simply because we allowed it to happen. And I'm going to start talking about this hush puppy incident and tell you how that played entirely into where we are right now. Because since even before the arrest of hush puppy, this has been going on for years. There has been an ever increasing trend of us, you know, bashing Yahoo Boys and saying, okay, Yahoo Boys are the problem of Nigeria. In this video, I will explain to you why that action is not only insignificant in making Nigeria a better place, but why that action is also very stupid and idiotic. Yahoo Boys are not the problem of Nigeria. Yahoo Boys are not ruining the reputation of Nigeria. That is a lie. Freelancers are not losing jobs because of Yahoo Boys. That is a stone cold lie. The entire situation that has been going on is only happening because we as a society, we do not understand something called priorities. We have no sense of priority in this country. None whatsoever. And I will explain. I will explain. First of all, we are willing to accept any form of, you know, reproach, any form of insult, any form of action taken against us just to justify, just to use that as a yardstick to beat ourselves and say this is the, this is the effect of Yahoo Boys. This is the hush puppy e effect. That is a bloody lie. Free, I am a freelancer. Since hush puppy was arrested, it's a lie. I, I have been getting, I've been making more money, not less money. Do you know why? Because people don't care about that. The entire narrative of, oh, freelancers are losing jobs. It's, it's, a, lie. it's a bloody lie. If you're a freelancer and you are working for, okay, obviously the biggest freelancing platform is Fiverr. People who are on Fiverr, they do not care about your location. Your location is one of the least things they care about. Before someone would even consider your location, they would consider about 10 other things. The most important thing, first of all, is your catalog. Your catalog is the most important thing when it comes to freelancing. After your catalog, your reviews are the second most important thing. After your reviews, your communication is also very important. After communication, how you price and how you lay out the prices of the packages you offer is also so very important. There are literally tens of things that people consider when they consider your location. The entire narrative of freelancers losing jobs because of your, it is stupid. It is idiotic. The only reason why we are floating this idea is because we want there to be a repercussion. We want to claim because we already have biases. We hate Yahoo boys. They stole your girlfriends. They are on gen when you are trying to sleep at night. They disturb you. They jump the queue when you are at the ATM. You dislike Yahoo boys. I understand. I understand. But this bias itself is feeding into a narrative that is just not true. It is a lie. It is a bloody lie. Think about this for a second. Think about this for a second. Nigerians. After Indians and America, we make the largest population of online freelancers on the biggest freelancing platform on Fiverr, on Upwork, even on Am Amazon does not even allow Nigerians in certain kinds of privileges. But we still make a significant proportion. We are the third, we have the third highest numbers of freelancers in the world. So you're telling me that people would now decide to stop using Nigerians. Do you know what that means? It simply means that this, these freelancing platforms would literally collapse. If one third, I know, or I have friends, I am a freelancer myself, I have friends who are freelancers, who have been making thousands of dollars, thousands, even while, it is a lie, it is a bloody lie, and everyone is so quick to mention anecdotes, oh, one of my friends, he lost his job, and they said, what does that mean, that is an anecdote, anecdote is not evidence, what does that mean, I can also tell you of someone who got a job, because he's a Nigerian, it doesn't mean anything, even without the issue of Yahoo Boys, there are times whereby freelancers experience a dry spell. You won't be able to get works. You won't be, get so many jobs during that period. It happens like two or three times a year. It doesn't, and it was not even happening during the hush period. It's a bloody lie. It's a bloody lie. 
But we are so we, we want for dear to be, you know, oh, Yahoo boy Henry is a is a bloody lie. We don't have any sense of priority. Now, if you think I'm saying what I'm saying is stupid, just now consider for a, for a second that there is a tiny, just a tiny, a microscopic bit of sense in what I am saying. Now think about this. Because obviously Americans are not stupid. Canadians are not stupid. And Americans and Canadians make the highest numbers of customers for freelancers. And they are not stupid individuals. They are actually quite smart. They are smart enough to build their countries that we want to leave this shithole to go over there to their countries. Now, think about this. Americans know Nigerians in the field of art. Americans know Nigerians in the field of music. They know Nigerians who are poets. They know Nigerians who are musicians. They know Nigerians who are actors. They know Nigerians who are athletes. Field and track events, they know Nigerians in several fields. In almost every Ivy League colleges in America, in almost every medical school in America, the top level, the people who dominate all those colleges are Nigerians and Africans. We dominate all the paid professions in America. And never for once, one in every three black doctor in America is a Nigerian. But never for once, have you heard an American saying, all Nigerians are doctors? Have you heard that? Have you heard that before? There are so many Nigerians, Nigerian Americans who are basketballers in the UK, in the US, in Canada. Have you ever heard Americans saying all Nigerians are basketballers? You've never heard that. You've never heard that. But for some reason, you want us to believe that Americans are stupid enough to hear a story of Nigerian scammers and say, okay, all Nigerians are scammers. Then even though I have been doing work with this Nigerian, even though he has the best catalog, even though he has the best reviews, I will choose to stop doing work with him and take the risk of using a, 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 another person who might be unreliable because I heard a story about a Nigerian. Do you think the Americans are that stupid? They are not. They are not. They are not as biased as we are. They are not. We literally are digging. We are looking for reasons to use to say, okay, yeah, who is the problem of this country? And there are so many people who want this to be, they want to change the narrative. They want to change the narrative of why Nigeria is today, the way it is today. We have no sense of priority. Nigeria is not the way it is today because of Ron's girls or Yahoo boys. Nigeria is the way it is today because of failed leadership. Our leaders in Africa are literally the scum of the earth. Yes, they are. These are the worst human beings. How much money has Osh probably been alleged to steal? The entire money Osh probably has been alleged to steal is not up to a billion dollars. Hell, it's not up to half of a million, half of a billion dollars. Do you know how much money Dizani stole? Do you know how much money has been stolen from Nigerians since independence? This goes into trillions of dollars. Do you know how much money that is? Do you understand how much money that is? There are so many people who want to change the narrative. EFCC has the guts to claim some sort of moral hierarchy over Nigerian youths. Saying, oh, the, these countries are losing respect for us. No! They never... They, 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 well, ask yourself, before you say countries are losing respect for Nigerians, ask yourself, did they ever respect us? Does America respect Nigeria? Does Canada, does Germany, does Europe, does Italy, do they respect Nigeria? The answer is no. How can you lose respect of people who never respected you. They do not respect you. America literally tells its citizens, do not go to Nigeria for whatever reason. We are listed under a country who sponsors, who has state-sponsored terrorism. They know. They know everything that goes on. They have drones everywhere. They know that our government funds Boko Haram. They know that the Buhari government is in bed with the Fulani headsmen. We have no sense of priorities. But you think the reason why PayPal is not in Nigeria is because of Yahoo Boys, it's because of Ron's girls. We have no sense of priorities. We have none whatsoever. We are literally grasping our straws just to use it to say, okay, this is the reason why this country is terrible. Now we are we even even when Dubai does some very outrageous things, we want to justify that in their defense, saying, okay, it's because of Nigerians. If a country is being biased towards you, they are the ones in the wrong. But we have accepted that mentality of people doing us wrong. And we accept it because we want to use that as a cane on the back to say, yes, this is the effect of Yahoo boys. No, it is not. Countries like Dubai, Ukraine, Russia, Turkey, they do not have extradition laws. They do not have this law because they want to be able to have certain privileges. They want to be able to harbor, you know, international criminals. That is why they do not have extradition laws. 
Dubai understood that horse puppies money was questionable. They understood that several people's money was questionable. But they did nothing. Do you know why? Because these people were spending the money in their economy. But now Dubai now came out with one after effects video. And they are, and they, and they are using it to say yes. This is why, this is why, eh, see what we have done, oh, we too we are good, and you are hailing Dubai. Why are you hailing Dubai? What did they do? They came up with a um, low budget video, and they, and they showed people arresting her, and so, what, is it? What, what, what was that? Horse people has been in that country. They have not been investigating horse people for up to three months. He has been there for so long. If he was actually a criminal, they would have not let him spend money in their country. But they did that. They still allow people who are rich, they allow criminals to spend money in their country simply because they want that money. And now, they are now using, they are, they are now overdoing. It's like, it's like someone who does not do what he's supposed to do. Then when something now explodes in their face, you now overdo. No one cares. No one cares about you creating stricter laws. No one cares about your fucking video. Who cares about that? Who cares about that? And all of you, hey, this is what we happen to Yahoo boys. Hush, see, let me tell you something. Hush puppy, even if it does go to jail, there is something called statute of limitation in the US. There is a maximum number of years that Hush puppy can spend in prison. If he does, if he has the worst lawyers, if he has the worst defense, if he is the most unlucky, Hush puppy cannot spend more than, he cannot even spend up to 15 years in the US jail. And guess what? Hush puppy probably has millions of dollars. In several Bitcoin accounts. If you have not made a million dollars by the time Hush comes out of prison, he will still be richer than you. And this is the, the worst case scenario. This is in the scenario whereby everything goes badly for him. Imagine that. Why is your concern, Hush Puppy? Why are we so concerned about people who are literally not doing, who are not taking money out of the economy? Yahoo boys are bringing money into the economy. If you are, if you are someone who is a businessman, if you sell luxury clothes, if you sell luxury phones, luxury cars, or you have hotels, a huge portion of your business is coming from the income of Yahoo boys. This does not mean it's right. I'm not saying it's moralistic. If you want to dis dissect internet fraud on a moralistic level, then it is wrong, obviously wrong, stealing people's money. It is wrong. But we have no sense of priorities. These people are stealing from outside, bringing, majority of them anyway, bringing the money into our economy. All these girls out there who are claiming, oh, Yahoo boys are bad, but you are selling hair. I can bet you that most of the people who sell hair, 50, at least 30% of your income is coming from girlfriends of Yahoo boys. If you are someone who, who sells cars, who is buying cars? People are losing their jobs. Who is buying cars in this pandemic? Yahoo boys. Do you know how much dollar is? Dollar is four seventy for fuck's sake. Who is buying? Who is buying iPhone X? Who is buying those phones? There is literally no business that, that is booming in this country that Yahoo money is not inside. I'm not saying it's correct. I'm saying that is the situation. Our government is stealing. They've been stealing from people billions upon billions of dollars. We do nothing. Ah, hashtag, hashtag, Dizani. We don't, we don't do anything. We don't hashtag. Only hashtag. But we can shout for Yahoo boys. There are so many politicians who want this to be the narrative. Look at Dilo Melaye. These countries don't have respect for us. They laugh at us. The, the, the cars that foreign senators would get in trouble for having. A developed country like U.S. would give people, the people will get in trouble for having Lamborghinis. Senators in the U.S., they will get in trouble for having Lamborghinis. Dino Benaya has Lambos. 90% of his cars cannot drive on 90% of Nigerian roads, but he has them. Where people are literally suffering and dying of poverty in his local government. And you're talking about Yahoo boys. We don't have sense of priority. We don't have any sense of priority in this country. People are dying every single day in Nigeria. Look at Southern Kaduna. Christians are, are not saying anything. Only, only online protests. Christians are doing nothing. Muslims are doing nothing. The only time Christians talk is to say, okay, Big Brother is demonic. Look at the shameless Agbaya in Cannes. They have not led any riots. They have not led any protests against Buhari's government. When they are killing, they are butchering Christians and raping their women in Southern Kaduna. Cannes is doing nothing about it. They are talking about how Big Brother is demonic. How Big Brother is supposed to lead the youth into... Nonsense! No sense of priorities! People who are dying in the north, Christians who are dying, these are real human beings who have lives, who have dreams, who have hopes and aspirations. They are dying every single day by Islamic extremists. 
Christians say nothing. The only time Muslims talk is to say, okay, these people are not really Muslims. Very comfortable, right? Very comfortable. A very good way to absorb yourself of any responsibility. If I could do that, it would be, no, no, no problem would be solved if that's how we do things. No problem will be solved. Say, okay, these people are not Muslims. Simple solution. Solution solved. So, okay, someone rapes a woman. Okay, that person, is not a, that person is not a man. Solution solved. So men don't do it. Men don't rape women. We have no sense of priority. Inside this pandemic, when people are suffering, people are dying. Or you think when he's preaching, if you don't, if you don't pay your tithes, you are under financial cost. Which is what nonsense. Greed will not, greed, you have so much. So much. You have billions of dollars. You have so much, and you still want, you are still trying to extract inside pandemic. Or oh, 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 this boy is not fighting, he's not in the north fighting for northerners. For, for, for northern Christians. He's fighting for tithes. Let me ask you a question, Oedipo. Muslims don't pay tithes. Muslims are still successful. So many Muslims are successful than so many Christians. So, I don't have financial courses. I don't pay tithes. I'm doing quite well. I'm not the richest person, but... I'm doing okay for myself. So I'm on a financial course. God, I don't pay tight. What's nonsense? Bloody nonsense. It's, 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 it's BBN. It's Big Brother. It's demonic. Agbaya. They are literally killing Christians in Nigeria. Christians, mm, Muslims, mm, only online protest. Buhari's government was disobeying the constitution of Nigeria. The people who protested for Shore. People who went out, they are not up to one redeemed parish in Abuja. If I believe Pastor Adeboye should go to Abuja now and say he wants to organize all night, you will see thousands of people going there, praying, scaboshing for, for, for Nigeria to become better. How does that solve anything? Why can't you go out there and protest? Why can't you fight your government? These people are destroying lives. They've been doing it for decades. These are the worst human beings on earth. You don't want to know how much I hate Nigerian politicians. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. And this fucking Diziani, she has the guts to come out and tell us that on what grounds of morals do you stand on? Diziani, I wish you death. I don't wish you should die of COVID-19. COVID-19 is too fat. I wish you should have cancer. I wish your health should deteriorate slowly. I wish for your skin to fall off. I wish for you to bury your children. You are a wicked human being. This goes for all Nigerian politicians. You are wicked people. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a flying fuck about you. We hate our leaders. Everyone agrees that they are terrible until it's time for elections. Then we love them again. Then we vote for them again. Look at Ajima B. He died. And people are saying, okay, ah, don't insult. Why? Why? Who was he? Who the fuck was he? Who the fuck was Ajima B? He was a terrible human being while he's alive. Death does not, does not elevate people to the status of, status of a hero or a martyr. Death does not do that. He was a terrible human being alive. I don't give a fuck about his death. In fact, his death is the only plus from COVID-19 that we've had so far. I don't give a fuck if you're his wife. I don't give a fuck if you're his family. You have to explain to me why Ajimobi's children have more value than the children of the people who, who chose him to lead them. This man made pensioners kneel down in the sun for hours and he refused to pay them their money. He insulted them. Old people, they were dying because they could not pay their medical bills. They could not feed themselves. Old people who have served Nigeria and are telling him that he's a hero. He's a, he's a, he's, he was a terrible human being in life. He's still a terrible human being. I don't give a fuck. I will say this anywhere. I was coming back from town one day. I saw a, a girl, a female student, a girl of like eight, maybe ten years. She was bleeding. Her mother was holding. Her mother was crying. She was bleeding. Why? She had an accident on the road that Ajimobi has, has received money to, to build twice. He received money to build the road under Jonathan. He received money to build the road under, under, under Buhari. Where are his children? His children are not, are not suffering. They are not, they are not having accidents on those roads. His children are, are in the US enjoying their lives. Why, do, why, do he, why are the lives of his, of his children more valuable than the average Nigerians? But we have no priority. None whatsoever. The Christians watching this video, they will prefer to talk about my durag. Ah, look at him. He's wearing durag. He's wearing chain. Instead of talking about Christians being murdered in, in, in Kaduna. Christians being killed in Kaduna. We have no 
says a priority. And not only does they know, Buhari knows he can do whatever the fuck he wants. We cannot organize protests of 1,000. We are 200 million. We cannot organize protests of 1,000 people. You are coming to say Yahoo is the problem. Yahoo is the problem. Shut the fuck up. We have no sense of priorities. Nigeria is burning. People are dying every single day. And hey, big, I don't give a fuck about Big Brother. Fuck Big Brother. Fuck Lekon or fuck whoever their name is. I don't give a fuck about Lekon. Why would I give a fuck about him? Look at the pastors talking about tithes. When Christians are being killed, they are cowards. We are cowards in this country. We are cowards. We are cowards. I say, oh, ah, foreign country is losing respect for Nigerians. Did they respect you? They, they, they never respected you. They know how many people are begging to come to their countries. The only thing that they respected, they respected the Nigerian individuality. They respected Nigerians, not Nigeria. Because they understood that Nigerians have a very good work ethic because we've been molded by suffering and hardship and adversity. So when we get to a first world country, we perform way better than every other person. Because they did not have, they did not go through the things we went through. They respect the Nigerian individuality. If you're a Nigerian electrical engineer, they would return you in their country. If you're a medical doctor, they will beg you to stay. They will beg you to stay. They don't respect Nigeria. How can Italy respect Nigeria? When Nigerians literally cross a desert, they take the risk of slavery just to escape this country. But no, now Yahoo boys be, be the problem. Yahoo boys say they are stealing from developed countries. Putting the money in the Nigerian economy. The people stealing from your own country. Stealing your own wealth. The wealth of your people. Of third world countries. Taking that money to first world countries. You know, you know they vet for them. If you want to be this angry at, at Yahoo boys. How can you scale up your anger? How, how can you scale up your anger for, for, for Nigerian leaders? How can you do that? There's literally no scale. The scale will break. If you are this angry as Yahoo boys, who steal money from us and bring it in here, how angry would you then be to people who steal money from poverty-stricken people and take it outside? And they laugh at us. They brag. I want Twitter. Children of, children of corrupt human beings showing off their cars, showing off their, their bends. I wish, I wish, I wish the life of the diseases afflicting Nigerians will affect the children of these politicians. I wish so for them. You don't want to know how much I hate these people. This reality, fuck you. Fuck you. I hope you die of cancer. I hope you rot to death. I hope you bury all your children.